Hello everyone and welcome to Devils United. Today I thought just to do a quick video just regarding the, the summer transfer window. Give my four best signings in this summer transfer window of 2022. There's been some brilliant, brilliant signings. Uh, there really has been. Um, the signings I am going to go to in a little bit of detail. Uh, they may surprise some people, they may not. Who knows, but we'll go from there. I haven't included any Manchester United players into this. Um, and there is going to be two players who I'm not going to be mentioning what will come as a shock, which will be Erling Haaland and Darwin Nunes. Um, as much as Darwin Nunes has scored some goals, he has had his suspension. So he was one of the that was one of the main reasons why I didn't add Darwin Nunes into there. Erling Haaland, as he's been superb, already scored nine goals. No person could do that, and he's what the last player since Aguero to do that. But it's just for me of the how the squad is for Manchester City as to why I didn't add Erling Haaland in. They already had an outstanding squad and. Based off the results Manchester City had, I would have expected them to get what they have got. So that's the only reason why I haven't added Erling Ireland into this. Um, but I'll go with the first signing, which I have picked as one of the best summer transfers. Uh, this one may come as a little bit of a shock, but I've picked Perisic from Tottenham. He went to Tottenham on a free from Inter Milan. Um, a wing back. He's played under Conte at Inter Milan. He's won the league at Inter Milan. Uh, he's played in Europe under Inter Milan. Spurs hasn't been in the Champions League for a few years now. You can see that Spurs has um, highly backed Conte in getting Perisic and getting Richarlison, Spence. Um, they've signed about six or seven players. So. Perisic for me was one of them standout players for me and for one I think Spurs has fixed up defensively and I have seen with Spurs is that they have had them times last season where they had them faulty goals what have cost them three points so it's uh, of, like they could have been drawing but they've lost because of leaky goals so um, Perisic has been great in that wing hand side. He's been great in going forward. Um, and I think he's adapted to the Premier League very well. He didn't start for the first two games, but he's been starting since. Um, I look at Spurs on the pitch, and I I will look at Perisic and go. He's probably been one of the more better better players for Spurs so far this season. The way he goes forward, the way he plays, you would not think he was in his 30s. He's a truly, truly, for me, a brilliant win back. And I can see why Antonio Conte really loves him. And to get him on a free and Spurs to get him on a two-year deal, um, I think it's a, a fantastic buy there from Spurs. So, yeah, Perisic for me is that number one. That It's not in order when I do this. This is my opinion. But Perisic for me is one of the best uh, signings in the Premier League in this summer um, and as well with Perisic he's there until uh, Segerson does uh, develop in his wing back role further so it's good to have a mentor in the likes of Perisic who has basically won everything in Serie A so very good there from Perisic the next signing I'm going to go to would be Gabriel Jesus uh, from Manchester City to Arsenal. Um, Gabriel Jesus, or even said as a Manchester City player, I want to play as a winger. Um, and we know the thing is, knowing that he wanted to play as a winger, he was a backup striker for City for a striker what was not there. Um, and I looked at him, I think if he wants to be a winger at Manchester City, he is not going to get into that squad. He played a couple of games near to the end of the season, he had his scoring boots on, but we all knew Gabriel Jesus would be leaving at that point. Um, but when he's come to Arsenal, I think he's been superb. I really, really do. 
Um, the thing is with Arsenal, especially in the second half of last season, they lost out and they lost the Bamiang to Barcelona. We knew Lacazette was going to be leaving on a free. Um, he did leave to his former club in this transfer window, so they didn't really have a striker to play with. Martinelli, Sako, Smith Rowe, all the young players there had to turn up, and. Um, to bring in a, an experienced player like Gabriel Jesus, this, even though he's still only very young himself, he's still not even hitting his prime yet. And he's one of the more experienced players. He's the player there who's won near enough everything already at the age of 25. The only thing he has not won yet is the Champions League, being at Manchester City's, but the, uh, the Premier League, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, that's the kind of mental you want up front. And he's been scoring them goals. And I think for me, that was the difference between Arsenal from being in Europa League football to Champions League football. They didn't have that goal scoring on a uh, scorer. And to have the likes of Gabriel Jesus, he's already scored a couple of goals this season. He's already got the service there of Saka. He's got Martinelli there as well. Odegaard, who I think is an exceptional player as well, to have them three players provide for you, and you're great. He's great in the air. He's great with his feet. Um, it's a even though the, what it's a bit of a pricey tag, fifth around fifty million. It's still a well spent amount there from Arsenal if they've improved, and they have improved because they've been unbeaten so far in. Uh, the Premier League, five games, five wins. That's what Mikel Arteta would love, especially knowing this time last season there was near enough at relegation fight. So, Gabriel Jesus is my second signing of the summer transfer window. Um, my third one, which people are going to know, is Palinio, uh, from going to Fulham from Sporting Lisbon. A lot of people know that I do watch a lot of sport in Lisbon and I rate Palinia massively. He was at uh, Sporting for a lot of his career. Um, coming to the Premier League, a lot of people said, why, why are you coming to Fulham? Why? Um, F Fulham's going to be in relegation fight. I even predicted them to finish 20th, uh, especially knowing that they've got Marco Silva. They've, uh, I'll look at it and go, apart from Palinia... Why they why they sign these players? That's what I've personally thought. And Paulinia for me, he has been a rock in that um, Fulham side. Fulham have nowhere near looked like a relegation team. They've been superb. They really, really have. And Paulinia, he's been so well defensively. He's able to cancel out players so good. And to have a kind of player like Paulinia in a team who has already won basically everything in Portugal domestic-wise, he's won the league only two seasons ago, um, to have that kind of player in a Fulham squad is superb. And to get him out an absolute steal of 10 million on top of that, he was in the Champions League last season and getting knocked out on the round of 16 and had the third highest tackles in the Premier League, it is absolutely insane. Um, he's already got his first goal as well for Fulham from a header. And I thought it was a, a well-taken goal, a well-taken header there from Palinio. Um, He's able to bring himself going forward. And what I've liked about Palinio in particular for me, um, Sporting do change the formations quite a lot. They can change from a 4-3, 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1. They change it quite regular. And... To change from being a how could a lone CDM because he was playing alongside Nunes, who is the new Sp uh, Wolves player, to be uh, playing in a double pivot at Fulham. Not just that he's had to change formations around to something he's not used to playing in a back four. What's not he's not used to, and to be in a completely different league. I gotta say, he is easily for me one of them best, uh, best signings of this transfer window. And his price of ten million, wow! Because the way Palinia plays, he is worth a lot more than ten million to them Fulham fans and to that Fulham squad. He's he was worth a lot more than ten million for me to sport in Lisbon, but 
what can I say? Pfft, wow. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more Polina in the Premier League because <laughs> I've enjoyed him. I've enjoyed watching him uh, as a sport, a sporting admirer to enjoy as a, a Premier League fan to seeing him in the Premier League doing well. Like I, I wish him all the best because he's sensational. He really, really is. And not just that, he's a Portugal international as well. So that's another factor for them. Um, the final signing I'm gonna go for is gonna be a shock one for you. I've gone for Tyler Adams from, uh, going from Leipzig to Leeds, and I th I think a lot of this will take a lot of people by surprise. Um, I said this one because Tyler Adams from Leipzig. I've watched a little bit of him. I haven't watched major loads. I don't really watch the Bundesliga. I've heard a mixture of reviews about him, but I've always said, for me, knowing that they've had Calvin Phillips in that team originally, who was so highly rated by Leeds uh, the, uh, in terms of the team, in terms of the fan base, that was his home. So he had a big massive step to come in and go, right, I've got to be the best Calvin Phillips here, and I think it's a big responsibility to come into um and i think he's done very well because leeds at the moment they've been a, a very very dangerous team in going forward they've been a, a brilliant team in terms of uh def defensive led they've not letting nowhere near as many goals as they have been doing and for me what i have really liked is that um his interceptions have been great. Cancelling out players has been superb. Um, and we have seen him playing in a different kind of formation as well. Just like Palini at Wolves. He's playing at four at the back, which Leipzig do play, but not a lot. But And on top of that, he's playing in a double pivot. I just think Tyler Adams, he's still only very young as well, so he's still got plenty of time to improve. But I think, considering where Leeds are at right now, compared to where Leeds were last season, who was fighting relegation, him and the other signings who they've got have made Leeds very comfortable of where they are in this first five games of the season. Um, and I think that he's quite underappreciated in the Premier League. Just because there's loads of defensive midfielders, a lot of people could mention before Tyler Adams. But I do genuinely believe in the next five years, perhaps, Tyler Adams will probably be at a, a big club. I do think that. If he continues the way he is playing, he's at a big club. I said this about Calvin Phillips when he was in the Championship. Don't be surprised if this guy gets snatched up by the likes of Man City or Liverpool or Manchester United. And I think that's going to be the same with Tyler Adams eventually. Because that's the prospect I have of this player. I think he's that good. But yeah, that's my summer transfers. Who I think has been the best so far in the Premier League. Everyone's going to have completely different ones. So if you have, go and put them down in the comments. Um, I'll be next live. It will be tomorrow for my Arsenal preview. Happy deadline, people. I hope you've been very, very happy with your signing so far. Um, for me, I, I'm happy who we've got. But as I've said, we still got to keep that Glazers out movement. Uh, recent signing there of Anthony is so fantastic. But yeah, see you all tomorrow. Hit that like and subscribe button. Take care. Bye-bye.